Hey guys, welcome back. This is Faisal Khan and in this video, I'm going to explore the Cisco Contact Center, uh, WebEx Contact Center Management Portal. Now the WebEx Contact Center Management Portal, how you access will depend on your role with, your, with Cisco, whether you're a Cisco partner versus you are the end customers. If you are the end customers, for example, you would most likely go to a separate web page and to give you an example, a direct URL, I'll copy the pa uh, paste in URL right here. Uh, <clears throat> HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash portal dash v2 dot wxcc dash us1 dot cisco dot com or maybe instead of us1, it might be something in Europe or in Asia. And once you go into that, oops. There was a little message uh, issues there in the end of my URL. So it will go there. It will come to this particular page if you're already logged in. If you're not logged in, then it's going to ask you for logging into your control hub. Now, if you if you are into the control hub, for example, right here, you can then access it by going to the contact center tab. Now, if you don't see the contact center tab in under services, then it is most likely that you do not have the license for that or is not being associated with your account at this moment. So you want to make sure that you do have that options. Now, if you click on this contact center tab right about here, it's going to slowly take you to an, another page of the control hub without moving away from the control hub where you can configure your contact center settings. Before, we had to come in here and configure all the sites, as you can see site. Now, you do notice there's an error uh, warning coming up in yellow. So that's an indication that this interface is going, is going to be phased out. So what, what the Cisco is going to do is going to manage everything through the control hub. So if you are working on the new interface, uh, old interface, you have to come here, provision, click on the site to create a site, whereas in the control hub, you go to uh, user management, you click on site, and you will have the site option as well. So moving forward, this uh, we're, we're talking about as of uh, right now, the recording is November the 19th, 2023. Moving forward, Cisco is going to move everything into the cloud. Now, if you are a partner, you will have something like uh, something called Gold Tenant. So, so uh, your company, and you will have a uh, very similar to what we call is uh, your try pop. What do you call? Sorry about that. Uh, a different portal, right? So, as a partner, your subscriptions, your license for contact center, how long, how many days is uh, is valid? All this stuff will be available here. So, if I were to look at my uh, how many concurrent agent, how many concurrent uh, standard agent, and et cetera, et cetera. You can create a trial for your customers who wants to uh, explore these options from here. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for this particular interface. And then they will be available, they'll be given their own control hub in this scenario. Now, again, depending on your partnership level, if you are a partner with the gold tenant, you may have a little bit different interface here. For example, I have a very uh, simple account called IT Pro Global. From here, I can maneuver through my settings. So on the dashboard, you usually see all your uh, IVR related tasks, uh, number of calls in the queue, how, how many calls are currently connected. And within your main portal, you may see additional tab depending on the license and uh, depending on the features that are available to you. For example, some customers might see something called the gold tenant, uh, where you can modify sub tabs, contains you know pay settings that are related to your account. Now on. Um, the left hand side you have your dashboard you got your provisioning provisioning is where you configure all your tasks now like i said it has it's being moved to the control hub you also have reporting and analytics this is allows you to create a visual re representation of your data of your contact center and we'll talk about how this is how to configure this in our lab guide as well now, moving forward, you have your business rules. You have uh, business rules where you create certain rules related to your business operations. You have your, um, oops, I'm gonna close this, BRE. Um, there are certain attributes, labels. We'll talk about that in our lab guide. 
Uh, routing strategy controls how your uh, network, how your calls are routed. Uh, so this is basically where you map your phone number or entry point to your flow and associate when the call is allowed during your normal business hours, uh, stuff like that. <clears throat> now you also have call monitoring. If you want to, if you're a supervisor, or if you're an enabled monitoring capability, you can do that from here. Record, you can manage all your recording under the call recording sections where you can manage all your records based on your recording schedules. Uh, record management, you can download up uh, all your recording that are available to you here. You can search them based on either their team, site, or agent, whatnot. And then, of course, there's an audit trial, a trail, uh, which allows you to kind of like troubleshoot if who, who made what changes and when. Now, one of the thing about WebEx Control Center uh, portal is that it will be synchronized with your WebEx uh, Control Hub. So, for example, if I were to go under provisioning and then I click on users and I should see all my users here. Now, this is the portal. So, let, let me log into my other account. So remember the user account that we created, uh, other uh, agent one, agent two, David, Faisal, Tom. Well, they are automatically being imported into your WebEx contact center. However, even though they do have the necessary license applied to them, but they don't have the contact center feature enabled for them at this moment yet. So for example, let's say I go to Faisal and I go to edit and I want Faisal to have a contact center, I must manually enable that feature for that individual. Now, I'm not going to save that information right now at this moment. In addition to that, I, have, I can configure supervisor settings because Faisal does have supervisor capability. Well, I keep talking about myself, but that's just an example. So let's go back to Tom. So if I were to select Tom, and I do enable the contact center, you notice that Tom does not have the supervisor capable settings available to him. And that is because Tom does not have the supervisor license. If I want to give Tom a supervisor license, I must go to the user, select the user account Tom, and then go to license sections, edit. And when I go to edit, I will make Tom a premium agent or of someone with a supervisor role. As soon as I do that, Tom will then at some point will be available as a supervisor in your WebEx contact center. So if I go to the WebEx contact center, back to the user, let's select Tom. And if I enable this, now you have the supervisor settings for Tom. So if you do need to provide supervisor capability, uh, or if you want this individual to be a supervisor, feel free to uh, assign the appropriate permission. Now, another things you can do for that particular agent, of course, you can give that person uh, admin privileges. So for example, when you go to edit license, you'll notice that there's an option called administrator. So if you want someone to be an administrator of your WebEx contact center, but not necessarily um, an agent, then you wanna uncheck that option and make that person an administrator. Now he or she will have the admin capability to do your day-to-day -day administration, but they will not be available as an agent in that scenario. So I'm not gonna save that. Now let's assume that at some point you did create the account, but for some reason they're not being displayed into your uh, WebEx contact center. What you can do is that under your control hub, go to your contact center port, uh, page then you will select uh, under tenant settings, there's called general, and here you have the options to synchronize it. So you can synchronize, make sure that both sides will, will have the appropriate um, username profile. Now, again, if, you, if you're someone who prefer to use the old portal to continue to administration, you can click on this uh, portal link, which will take you to the same web interface that we've just shown you. All right, so you can see the company name, you can have some settings like threshold configuration, concurrent settings, everything that we will discuss in the subsequent video. All right, so that's it for, uh, there's something called in a, a, a part, um, auto purge inactive configuration. So if you do feel that some of the settings are useful to your organization, feel free to apply them.
All right, so that's it for this video. Until then, I will see you in the next video.